Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 6, Section 2 of the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Ass. Ah. Oh. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Arthur Conan Doyle. Chapter 6, Section 2. Harajd. And unkempt. Staring out at me. My God. It's Watson, said he. He was in a pitiable state of reaction. With every nerve in a twitter. I say. Watson. A Friday. Third heavens. I thought it was Wednesday. It is Wednesday. And began to sub in a high treble key. I tell you that it is Friday. Anne. Your wife has been waiting this two days for you. So I am. But you've got mixed. What's then? For I have only been here a few hours. Three pipes. Four pipes, you forget how many. But I'll go home with you. I wouldn't frighten Katie by little Kate. Give me your hand. Yes. Then I shall go in it. But I must do something. Find what I owe. What's then? I am a love colour. I walk down the narrow passage between the double row of sleepers, holding my breath to keep out the vial. Stupefying fumes of the drug. I'm looking about for the manager. Pluck at my skirt. And a low voice whispered. Walk past me. And then look back at me. The words fell quite distinctly upon my ear. I glanced down. They could only come from the old man at my side. And yet he sat now as absorbed as ever. Very thin. Very wrinkled. Bent with age. An opium pipe dangling down from between his knees. As though it had dropped and she last stewed from his fingers. I took two steps forward and looked back. Astonishment. He had turned his back so that none could see him but I. His form had filled out. His wrinkles were gone. The dull eyes had regained their fire. And there, sitting by the fire and grinning at my surprise, was none other than Sherlock Holmes. He made a slight motion to me to approach him. And instantly, as he turned his face half around to the company once more, subsided into a doddering. Is that senility? Holmes, I whispered. As low as you can, he answered. I have excellent ears. Then pray send him home in it. You may safely trust him. For he appears to be too limp to get into any mischief. To say that you have thrown in your lot with me. If you will wait outside. It was difficult to refuse any of Sherlock Holmes requests. For they were always so exceedingly definite. And put forward with such a quiet air of mastery. I felt it. However. That when Whitney was once confined in the cab, my mission was practically accomplished. And for the rest. Of those singular adventures which were the normal condition of his existence. In a few minutes I had written my note. Paid Whitney's bill. Led him out to the cab. And seen him driven through the darkness. In a very short time a decrepit figure had emerged from the opium den. 
and I was walking down the street with Sherlock Holmes. For two streets he shuffled along with a bent back and an uncertain foot. And then simply round. He straightened himself out and burst into a hearty fit of laughter. I suppose. Watson said he. That you imagine that I have ended up being smoking to cooking in chickens. It's one of my natural enemies. Or shall I say, my natural prey. Briefly, Watson, I am in the midst of a very remarkable inquiry. And I have hoped to find a clue in the incoherent ramblings of these suts. As I have done before now. Or as purchase. For I have used it before now for my own purposes. And the rascally Lascar who runs it is sworn to have vengeance upon me. There is a trap door at the back of that building. Near the corner of Paul's Wharf. What? And. Watson has been done to death in that den. It is the vile murder trap on the whole riverside. And I fear that Neville Street, Claire has entered it never to leave more. Whistle surely a signal which was answered by a similar whistle from the distance. Followed shortly by the rattle of wheels and the clink of horses' hoofs. And Watson said Holmes. As a tall dog cart dashed up through the gloom, throwing out a golden tunnels of yellow light from its side lanterns. You'll come with me. Well, a trusty comrade is always of use, and the chronicler is still more so. Is that is Mister Stroop Clare's house? Where is it? In Kent. Of course you are. You'll know all about it presently. Jump up here. Alright. Dan. We shall not need you. Here's half a crown. Look off for me tomorrow. About Lynn. Give her her head. Salam. He flicked the horse to his whip, and we dashed away through the endless succession of sombre and deserted streets, which widened gradually until we were flying across a broad balustrade bridge, with the murky river flowing sluggishly beneath us. Beyond lay another dull wilderness of bricks and mortar, its silence broken only by the heavy, regular footfall of the policemen or the sums and chests of some belated party of revellers. A dull rack was drifting slowly across the sky. Clouds. Holmes drove in silence, with his head sunk upon his breast, and there of a man who was lost in thought, while I sat beside him. To be continued.